welcome back. After a week off, the number one ranked Steel Knights resumed District 27-6A play at the New Braunfels Unicorns last night. First quarter, Steel ball. Chad Warner, you see right there, hands off to Jonathan Hatton, and he rips off his 17-yard touchdown run. Point after was good, and it's 7-0 Knights. Later in the first same score, Warner throws right there. The ball to Sammy Harris in the flat. Look at my man Harris. He does the rest. He slips to a defender and then outruns the defense to the end zone. That's a 61-yard touchdown, and the Knights lead 13-7 at that point, and still wraps this one up 27-14. Time for a 29-6A matchup at the Gus between the Holmes Huskies and the eighth-ranked Jay Mustangs. First quarter action. Take a look here. QB Jackson Gutierrez for John Jay throws over the top to Diego Quiroz. That's ruled a 30-yard reception down to the three-yard line. Moments later, Jack Mata scores from three yards out. And then we're going to see the two-point conversion. That's good. And Jay leads 8-0. to zero. Later in the first, Jay strikes again as Fotog Mark Mendez was leaving. Jackson Gutierrez on the QB keeper, and he snaps off a 46-yard touchdown run for John Jay to make it 16-0 Mustangs. And Jay wins this one, the neighborhood rivalry 53-25, to improving to 7-0 overall and 5-0 in district play. Okay, how about the Divine War Horses invading Alamo Stadium to face the YMLA Lions in a District 14-4A2 opener for both these teams. Third quarter, War Horses up 14-7. About to get more here. Look at my guy here, Sam Guardiola. He appears to get wrapped up, but then Sam breaks free and then finds nothing but green space there. Open space in front of him, and that will go down as a 37-yard touchdown run to make it 21-7 Divine. So let's check out the scoreboard to see how this one ended up. You see Divine takes care of business there, 35-14. to Some other scores from last night. Smithson Valley, the Rangers beat Kyle Lehman 42-7. And then in this SAISD matchup, Sam Houston takes care of the Lanier Vokes 27-17. How about this old school rivalry matchup? Marshall takes down Lee 38-14. And then Medina Valley beats, or excuse me, falls to Laredo Nixon there 16-14. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. All right, Cowboys versus Niners. Not much else needs to be said as these old NFC rivals go at it again on Sunday. And if all goes as planned, the Cowboys will have all five starting offensive linemen together. That lineup is left tackle Tyron Smith, left guard Tyler Smith, center Tyler Biotish, right guard Zach Martin, and right tackle Terrence Steele. Through four games this season, Steele is the only starter not to miss time. This is a massive game for the Cowboys, so having their best O-line out there versus that Niners impressive defensive line is pretty huge. I mean, it's awesome. I'm glad that everybody uh, is back for this matchup. You know, obviously, this is going to be a great game. You know, there's obviously a lot of history there. Like, you know, nobody can forget that. But uh, it's going to be great. It really is. Oh, it would be huge. I mean, we were, t we were talking about it today. We haven't had a game, obviously, this year. And, um, you know, a little bit of a different lineup um, last year. So this, this group of five have never played a game together. So we're excited to go out there and, and uh, you know, go to work. Micah Parsons earlier this week was defending Jets quarterback Zach Wilson and Giants quarterback Daniel Jones who are both taking a bit of a beating on social media from their fans. Parsons said that people need to relax and be more mindful about how they talk on social media. Taking a look at Micah there, we'll see him and the rest of the boys Sunday night at San Francisco. Should be a lot of fun there. Also, the Spurs are having their free open scrimmage at the Frost Bank Center on Saturday as well. So there's just a lot going on. And tickets for those? <laughs> Those have already been handed out. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately, you cannot get that. But if you're heading out there, free parking. They're also going to have uh, specials on drinks and food and things like that. That should be lots yeah. of fun. Wemby Watch. Wemby Mania. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot more to come. Social media can often influence our spending habits. But buyer beware before you click on those ads and start shopping. Make sure you're on a real site. How scammers are now targeting people through social media ads in the next half hour. And new today at 5, Halloween isn't the only thing to look for during the month of October. Falling prices on major household items. We'll tell you which stores are holding big sales events this month, including this weekend. This is all today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Federal safety regulators are pushing to get 52 million airbags recalled because they could be dangerous. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says models made by Arc Automotive and Delphi Automotive Systems could explode. 
Regulators say that could severely injure or even kill a car's occupants. At least two people have died in the U.S. and Canada, and there have been seven serious injuries, with most occurring since 2016. The potentially dangerous airbags can be found in models by the big three American automakers, as well as most major foreign manufactured brands. Meanwhile, ARC Automotive executives are pushing back, disputing the federal agency's safety data. And this noon, a new warning from the Federal Trade Commission about social media scams. Americans are being cheated out of billions of dollars. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the details and how to protect your wallet. Hannah Ford of Texas says she thought she was buying a gift for a friend from a social media ad. Everything looked really legitimate. It had positive customer reviews. There was a video of her showing off her storefront at her location in Florida. But when her order never arrived, she noticed the social media page and website for the company no longer exists. She had been scammed. I was definitely surprised that this happened to me. The FTC sharing new data exclusively with GMA, showing that since 2021, consumers lost a staggering $2.7 billion to social media scams, which it says have grown grown exponentially each year since 2019. And you have to remember, these are just the people who reported to us. We know that most people never report fraud. So this appears to be the tip of a very large iceberg, and it's concerning. The FTC says scams are a problem for all ages, but the numbers are most striking for younger people. In the first half of 2023, in reports of money lost to fraud by people 20 to 29 years old, social media was the contact method more than 38% of the time. And for people 18 to 19, it was 47%. When it comes to protecting yourself, experts say don't be so fast to click on those ads. Do your homework, search the company, maybe look up their name with the word complaints or scams and see what you find before you send your money. All right, that was ABC's Ariel Rishif reporting there. And wow, look at this. <laughs> Taking a look at live cam. Beautiful, beautiful look at San Antonio right now. That's what I love about this Friday. Mm -hmm. This is just the perfect <laughs> weather <laughs> to go even decorating your house, be outside. Do all of the fall things. Yes. And it's so nice to see temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s and already not the 90s, right? That is such a welcomed change. Yes, it is still going to be seasonable mid 80s out there this afternoon, but then we see even more fall temperatures and fall air work in for the upcoming weekend. So let's get you those details again right now. Upper 70s, low 80s. If you're fixing to step out for any of those Friday lunchtime plans, currently 81 over at SA International, 82 on the south side at Stinson, and 84 out east in Gonzales. Mix of sun and clouds will continue into this Friday afternoon. That forecast high around 86 degrees. And then after we see the sun go down, we'll start to see those temperatures fall into the 70s just in time for any Friday evening plans as that drier air starts to work in as well. Well, it could be a little breezy at times if you're stepping out for any Friday night area football games. Some wind gusts out of the north, upwards of about 20 miles per hour possible. By kickoff, 80 degrees expected at about 7 p.m. And then by halftime, we'll see those temperatures fall into the mid-70s. Speaking of mid-70s, that's where our high temperature is pointed tomorrow after we see the second push of cool air work into the area. Still holding on to the 70s for your Sunday, those mornings trying to drop into the upper 50s and then the humidity is going to start to work back in early next week as those temperatures start to warm as well. So we'll time that out plus get you a look at some awesome KSAT Connect photos that were sent in of backyard rain gauges. A lot of folks happy here in San Antonio. We'll have all those details in just a few guys. Former President Donald Trump is throwing his support behind a candidate for House Speaker. He's backing Congressman Jim Jordan from Ohio, a member of the far right Freedom Caucus. It comes after Trump said he would consider serving as speaker for a short time after receiving endorsements from several House Republicans. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise has also announced his candidacy for speaker. Republicans will again hear from speaker candidates at a forum next Tuesday, setting up for the next possible House wide speaker vote on Wednesday.
And speaking of former President Donald Trump, he is now accused of revealing potentially sensitive information about America's nuclear submarines to an Australian businessman. ABC News is reporting Anthony Pratt told special counsel Jack Smith about the alleged disclosure amid the investigation into Trump's handling of classified information. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. Shortly after leaving office, Donald Trump allegedly revealed potentially sensitive secrets about U.S. nuclear submarine capabilities with Australian billionaire Anthony Pratt, a member of the former president's Mar-a-Lago club, according to sources familiar with the matter. Those sources say Pratt then shared the information with at least 45 others, including more than a dozen foreign officials, several of his own employees and a handful of journalists. Anthony is one of the most successful men in the world, uh, perhaps Australia's most successful man, as they say. Trump's disclosure allegedly took place in April 2021, just months after he left the White House. Sources say Pratt told special counsel Jack Smith's team about the discussion as part of the investigation into Trump's handling of classified documents. Pratt said to describe the interaction as Trump leaning towards him as if to be discreet and allegedly sharing two critical pieces of information about U.S. submarines, the supposed exact number of nuclear warheads each usually carries and how close they can supposedly get to a Russian submarine without being detected. Sources say Pratt told investigators Trump did not show many documents, but the account could help prosecutors during trial establish a habit from Trump of recklessly handling classified information. A Trump spokesperson says what ABC News was told lacks proper context and relevant information and that Trump did nothing wrong. Pratt has yet to comment. Smith's classified documents case against Trump, who's charged with 40 counts of unlawful retention of national defense information and obstruction-related offenses, goes to trial in May. The information about Pratt's alleged conversation with Trump not included in Smith's indictment. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Welcome back. The U.S. economy added 336,000 jobs in September. That's nearly double what was expected. According to data released today by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, economists were predicting 170,000 jobs to be added last month. September's numbers are the largest monthly employment gain since January and are significantly higher than the 227,000 jobs added in August. September's start gain was helped in part by the leisure and hospitality industry. This marks the 33rd consecutive month of job growth in the U.S. All right, taking you outside with live cam right now, and it is a beautiful Friday that we have taking place here. We got pumpkin patches, yes. pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> yes, all of the things. All the above. All of the pumpkins. You know where to, to find us this week. Yeah, we'll be yeah. at an area pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. if you're RJ, we're going to be watching football, oh, yeah, too. Definitely. Perfect Outdoors. football weather. Yeah. <laughs> yes, excited for the cooler weather. Something else that's happening in eight days. The countdown is on. Something else that's very cool, the Ring of Fire annular solar eclipse taking place across parts of the south central Texas sky Saturday, October 14th. Again, the moon is going to move in front of the sun. We see that Ring of Fire. Get your glasses, make your eclipse viewers, all of the things. You've got so many details up at ksat.com regarding even events that are happening for the eclipse. Also up on KSAT.com, a list of area rainfall totals. We're going to show you some KSAT Connect photos of that, plus detail the weekend after the break. So we're in the Halloween spirit. Mm -hmm. Spooky season. Yeah, spooky films. <laughs> yeah. Spooky decoration. I like Halloween movies, yes. Yeah, and but costumes. I don't want to, yeah, that too, <laughs> of course, gearing up for Halloween. But uh, this weekend, not trying to stay inside to no. watch a movie. Yeah, I love doing that. But still, this is a good weekend. This is the outside. perfect weekend. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to say, the last thing that we kind of needed was just some spooky season weather mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. to work its is, way in. Mm -hmm. And it's at least going to start feeling more like fall across the area really this weekend all following the first front that we had move in yesterday bringing with it rain and storms across South
South Central Texas. Take a look at some of these KSAT Connect photos from area rain gauges. We love to see it. This one sent in from Canyon Lake, just over an inch of rain, almost two inches of rain in Live Oak. Here's one from Jordanton out there in Atascosa County, just under an inch. And then the Alamo Ranch Valley Ranch neighborhood almost two inches of rain. So we love to see it. If you have any photos of your backyard rain gauges that you would like to submit, you can do that either on your KSAT Weather Authority app or just go to KSAT Connect. We would love to see them as well. All right, so a lot more quiet out there today compared to what we saw yesterday. Mid 80s expected. Dew points are going to drop in the afternoon, especially later this afternoon and into the evening. And then this weekend highs in the 70s. That's that's about it. Mid to upper 70s expected here in San Antonio and a few mornings in the upper 50s expected as well, mainly by Sunday morning. That's when we'll really start to see the effect of the second push of cooler air work its way into the region. And then next week that gradual warming trend takes back over, but it is looking like we'll see another front move in just before next weekend. So a lot to monitor with that as well. Something to check back in on in the coming days. All right, here's your case at 12 hour forecast throughout the remainder of this Friday, 85 degrees by 3 p.m. A mix of sun and clouds, 86 by five o'clock. And then for any Friday evening plans, 80 degrees by seven. And then after the sun goes down, we'll see those thermometers fall into and through the 70s. Somewhat of a seasonable day across the region to 86 that forecast high in Pleasanton, 85 in Catula, 82 in Kerrville, 85 as well out east in Gonzales. Then we see those cooler temperatures take back over tomorrow, actually below average for this time of year. 76 for your Saturday, 77 on Sunday, and then there's that warming trend that takes back over into next week. But speaking of that secondary push of cooler air that moves in for the weekend, there's where that boundary currently sits just up to our north. Behind it, take a look at these temperatures across the northern tier. 50 in Minneapolis, it's 43 degrees right now in Bismarck, North Dakota. Not going to get that cold here locally, but at least we do have some of that cooler air moving in over the next 48 hours. As it does so, it's ushered in via a breezy north wind. I think as early as tonight through the overnight and first thing tomorrow, we could see some wind gusts upwards of 25 to even 30 miles per hour at times. So just know if you are stepping out first thing tomorrow morning, could be a little breezy there as well. We will monitor cooler mornings by Sunday and Monday with forecast lows in the upper 50s this weekend. Get outside and enjoy it, and then we'll start to warm things up a bit into next week. We're going to take a step aside. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, and we were talking about this just a little while ago. It is officially spooky season. Love that. And even those who aren't ready for some scares can get on board with this Halloween candy. Yep, according to CandyStore.com, the treat of choice, Reese's Cups. They took the number one spot across the country. M&M's and Hot Tamales earned spots two and three. All right, surprise about Hot Tamales there. Also surprise about this candy corn making a surprising comeback in the top 10 and it's Utah's favorite. And the top candy in the Lone Star State is Sour Patch Kids. Do you agree with that? I like Sour Patch Kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And gummy bears and gummy worms and all that good stuff. <laughs> all, the bugs, all the worms. <laughs> <laughs> and since Halloween is just a few weeks away, a lot of folks are putting up spooky decor. All right, but some of that fall de time decor is just a bit too scary. CNN's Jeannie Mose reports some are alarming bystanders enough for them to call 911. What does a crackling Yule log in New York City have in common with a house seemingly ablaze in Glens Falls, New York. Both were truly alarming, but triggered false alarms. Craziest thing just happened. I saw a fire in a building and called 911. <laughs> but it turns out it was just a eight foot TV with a Yule log on it. Yeah, well, first of all, there's the timing. It ain't even Halloween and people have their Christmas TVs up. But what Kieran Murray asked was this. What would you have done? There was practically unanimous agreement. New Yorkers motto is if you see something, say something. Don't worry, you did the right thing.
Only a couple of days earlier, the Glens Falls Fire Department was called to this home, <laughs> which looked to be on fire, but was actually a glow with Halloween spirit, spooky decor featuring LED lights, a box fan, and a fog machine. The firefighters weren't upset. We like these calls, they wrote on Facebook. It reminded us of the time almost five years ago when a Texas homeowner dangled a dummy from his roof, inspired by National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> this Christmas tableau not only resulted in multiple calls to 911, a good Samaritan even ran to the rescue. Talking to the dummy. Can you reach it? But even if there was no danger. Help! The dummy was still the one on the roof, not those who at least don't act like bumps on a log, a yule log. Genimos, CNN. What is a yule log anyway? New York. Wow. <laughs> Those displays are getting so elaborate now. Even just driving through different neighborhoods, you see like, oh, okay, skeleton kind of, but some of them are fun, some of those very realistic though. Very realistic, <laughs> yeah. and what would you do? Obviously, you see something yes. like that, you say something, Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Yeah, that would definitely be the move right there. You guys see that? <laughs> well, I feel like I need that. a really big can of Raid. It's a giant cockroach. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. But it's yes. yummy. Mm. And ah! my seed in it. Protein. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. How about <laughs> Justin Cakes? Yes, with some of the creepiest cakes in town. Justin Dominguez is here. Not only makes these cockroaches and that cake as well. Oh, yeah. That is absolutely amazing. And what is the cockroach actually? Uh, our cockroaches are eclairs. Uh, uh, chocolate. It's got a, a caramel on top and a little cream on the inside. Tastes a little bit better than regular cockroaches. <laughs> Watch that. Not that I've ever eaten a cockroach before. <laughs> All right, it is Halloween, and that means costume time. Oh. Look at our friends here. Yes, we are going to tell you where you can hang out with all these fabulous fairy tale characters and the Sanderson sisters, of course. Yes, indeed. And we are going to be in costume. What do you think we're going to be dressed up as? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you say. <laughs> anyway, hey, want to spruce up the house? Guess where Jen is right now at the Home and Garden Show. Hey, Jen. That's right. Do you know what I love about the San Antonio Home and Garden Show is all the inspiration that you get when you come out here. There's over 200 different vendors and there's a Barbie themed inspirational room contest. That's why I got my pink on. We're going to show you that coming up in a bit. Speaking of pink, Pink Shark Bar is serving up some extra tall cocktails. It is the Wendy. That and a whole lot more.